Americans, but we have returned. This will be the last Sunday broadcast of 2013. It is the 29th day of December 2013. And I do want to open the phones up in the first hour. Now, I usually don't even do that in the second because I tend to have so much news I want to cover. I don't get to your calls, but I specifically, and I'll give the number out in about 20, 30 minutes and open the phones up, want to hear from you on what you think the most important stories of 2013 were, because it's important to be retrospective, and then also to look forward what you think is going to happen in 2014, which I myself and many other uh, folks smarter than I in many areas believe is, is the most critical year perhaps in world history. Because if we screw up and have another world war, it's going to be thermal, nuclear, biological, chemical, and nanotech in nature. There's a lot of other weapon systems. And we probably, as a species, won't make it. So we're kind of reaching that point where we've got to decide whether we want to go into the future or not as a species. It's make it or break it time. And I'm not saying all this will happen in 2014, but the breaks, uh, the analogy I was thinking of last night when I was out having dinner with some friends was it's like pool where you hit the ball, you know, that first hit after you've racked the other balls, and the, the direction and the lay of the game to come to a great extent is based on how good a hit you put in to that triangle of balls. And that's what 2014 is on so many fronts. It is not just a big deal here in the United States, but it's a big deal worldwide. And there's a lot of different reasons for that. We're going to be breaking it down uh, coming up today. Obviously, there is a massive ton of important news here. And as usual, I don't know where to start. Here's a story uh, from RT, from Infowars.com. We posted it, Drudge link to it, DrudgeReport.com. LAPD deploys drug detection swab test at sobriety checkpoints. Now, folks... I've been telling you for about five years, these are federal grants. They admit they're to prepare people for forced uh, DNA swabbing at highway checkpoints. And now they're not just hiring off-duty cops to do this under the federal program. They are setting it up and basically forcing people to do it via intimidation. And hey, mind if I do a breathalyzer or I'm going to take you to jail. Now I'm going to take a cheek swab. And I told you that was next. These, I'm not smart, okay? I've learned how the globalists operate. It's like if you have a con artist neighbor that you've lived next to for five years, and you finally learn all their tricks, basically. Because criminals and, and scammers only have certain systems they follow. Criminals are extremely obsessive compulsive. And I'm not even saying the police are criminals here, though they're engaged in criminal, unconstitutional, racketeering, uh, intimidation, color of law, garbage. I'm not saying they're consciously criminal, but the, the, the social engineers that are coming up with this on record are criminals. And we're going to be going over that. So that's just one of the articles I've got here. I mean, there's got to be more than 200 today. This is a mass load of information. Uh, we're going to be breaking that down. A DNC sends out email uh, defending Obama from impeachment possibility. And the Daily Caller makes a joke out of this. This is very serious. There is, according to many Congress people I've talked on and off air, a major move of impeachment being looked at for at least the Attorney General. And of course, just like with Nixon, if that starts with the Attorney General and others, it's over. If, if, if cabinet level people get targeted in impeachment, it'll turn into a criminal investigation of uh, the fraudster in chief, the Lord of Obamacare. care. So we're going to be breaking it all down straight ahead. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on another live worldwide broadcast, the 29th day of December 2013. And again, this will be the last Sunday broadcast of 2013, but we'll be here live tomorrow and again then on Tuesday into New Year's. I haven't decided yet if we'll be live New Year's Day. And I think I'm going to wait until New Year's Eve to see if some... A uh, huge news story uh, befalls us, and then I will be uh, here live on New Year's Day. But we are live on this Sunday edition, and then we'll be back weekdays, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're here every Sunday live, 4 to 6 p.m. Central. And, of course, a lot of uh, affiliates, about half of them uh, roughly, uh, don't carry the show live, so you're hearing it at different times all around the country. Some stations, in fact, uh, air this Sunday show um, 
later in the evening the next day and have a special edition. So we want to thank all of those great affiliates out there uh, for being fellow travelers in liberty, not fellow travelers in collectivism and tyranny. All right, let me just give you some of the headlines. I'm going to try my best to go over these and then open the phones up on some big questions I've got that I want to get your take on uh, out there. Hope you had a great Christmas and we're plunging into 2014, such a critical year. DNC sends email defending Obama from impeachment possibility. And some of the conservative groups made a joke about this saying, oh, you guys are paranoid. Oh, well, that's what the blue blood Republicans hope because they don't want to impeach Obama. That'll bring justice to the whole system and scare the abuse of power. They want Obama to leave office so the Republican establishment can seize power and use all these new dictatorial goodies and precedents that Obama has set. We want to bring Obama and his cohorts that, I don't want to exaggerate, have probably done five times more tyranny than any other president before him. And again, I was a big critic of Bush, folks. Obama is literally so horrible and has carried the ball for tyranny. He basically made like a thousand touchdowns against liberty. I mean, it's just so devastating, so horrible. We've got to reverse all this and you've got to... You have investigations. You've got to impeach people. You've got to jail people. Or it sets the precedent and they get away with it. So we're going to be talking about that today. Listen to this Daily Caller. DNC sends email defending Obama from impeachment possibility. The Democratic National Committee sent on a paranoid email Saturday evening urging supporters to vote for Democrats so the Republicans can impeach President Obama. They went on to say it's desperate in 2014. If the Tea Party people get in, they'll impeach him. Oh, that's actually true. That's why you've got the Republican leadership, Boner and Rove and all of them, the people that helped write Obamacare, on record. All together, you've got them working in concert to try to keep Obamacare in place, to try to keep the Federal Reserve in place, to try to keep the status quo of galloping tyranny in place. And so you've got the uh, big Republican uh, you know, associations of manufacturers and the uh, different uh, business groups that have actually deindustrialized this country, the groups that are actually insiders who, who only want business for themselves and want big government to shut down their competition, all the big Republican blue blood scum groups, Mafia groups who helped create the modern Democratic Party, basically, as, as their fake loyal opposition. So the Democrats are so horrible, you keep voting for the Blue Bloods. The Blue Bloods are all lined up with the Democrats. And when, and when an Obama speech leaks or a Biden speech leaks, who are they talking about? They're talking not about the Russians, not about the shy -coms, not about not about any of that. They're worried about the Tea Party. That's why it's so fashionable in even mainline neocon talk radio to bash the, you know, the Libertarian Tea Party because they're the only people that know what's going on. They're not perfect, but they're the only possible uh, opposition to the globalist takeover. They understand the basics and the public sees them as the opposition properly. And so it's growing at the state and federal and local level. And that is panicking the system right now across the board. That is panicking the system at every single level. So the entire power structure who's tried to co-opt the Tea Party in the last seven, eight years, back when Ron Paul first founded it, then they couldn't co-opt it. They couldn't derail it. They couldn't buy it off because it was an idea. So even if they bought it off, the crowds just went somewhere else. The idea continued on like the phoenix out of the ashes. And so now they're trying to kill it. I mean, just look it up. It's in the news every day. The entire Republican blue blood establishment, the entire globalist banking cartel, the entire military industrial complex. They are all on record steamrolling ahead as viciously as they possibly can to get rid of it. And they know if there's a Tea Party sweep into the House and even a few seats in the Senate, there will be impeachment. And folks, Obama makes Richard Nixon look like the, 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 the Archangel Gabriel or something, as bad as Nixon was, he did not want to destroy America. He did not want to destroy all the families. He did not want to totally socialize everything. He, did, he just wanted power and control. And the elites couldn't fully control him, so they set him up and basically had him impeached. And that's all been declassified and come out. Bob Woodward of the 
naval intelligence and others with the CIA infiltrating his own organization and his own group, making him paranoid to target his political opposition and then bringing him down. And I'm not romanticizing Nixon. They were looking at plans to bomb their own RNC event, it, it even has come out on PBS and Frontline to blame it on their political opposition. That, that's how bad Nixon was. He was gonna blow stuff up and blame it on his political opposition because he thought they were evil and needed to be done. But he at least thought he was good. With these people, with these globalists, they, they are all about criminal, total domination of the individual, the wrecking of America forever, period. And that's why it's total scorched earth, salting the earth, massive economic, cultural siege of America to, to, to fully bring us into the new world order. Because you can't have our country owning guns and having private property when the globalists are getting rid of that worldwide, except for offshore corporations that are above the law and have corporate diplomatic immunity. So that's what's happening. That's why 2014 coming up is so incredibly critical. But... The loyal opposition, neocons posing as libertarian conservative groups, are always there joking and, and, and laughing and, ha ha, no one would ever impeach Obama. How ridiculous. Who would think of such a thing? Paranoia. No, no, we must move forward to impeach the attorney general for Fast and Furious and all the other lies. And Hillary, uh, I don't care if she's left office, you know, drag her up there uh, over Benghazi and caught lying. And, and caught lying about Obamacare. I mean, it should be, but see, the Republican leadership is all involved in this. They're all corrupt as well. So who are they going after? Ted Cruz, Rand Paul, Matt Drudge, Alex Jones, people like that. They're demonizing anyone who just isn't completely sold out to tyranny and, and who isn't an insane control freak. I have a stack of news articles here uh, where the radical Islamicist... Uh, attacked Christians, churches, and in some cases killing more than 100 people per church, they would blow them up during Christmas services. Uh, Catholic churches, uh, Orthodox churches, all those ancient churches. And uh, reportedly uh, in Syria, they would tell them as they bombed them and the people would run out and they would shoot them, uh, leave Syria, you are invading. Uh, even though these Christians were there for a thousand years before there were any Islamicists in Syria. Syria is next to like Galilee in Israel, the oldest seat of Christianity. Just a little newsflash for everybody. Syria is next to Israel, the oldest Christian settlements in the world. Let's just get that straight. Islamist students torch buildings at university in Egypt. Christian bombings kill 34 in Iraq. Reuters, Christmas Day bombing, uh, you know, kill 37. Uh, Christmas attack shows security challenges in Iraq, Afghanistan. Uh, but notice the media did, didn't want to report. You could find it, but it was in the back of the paper or hidden in, on the Internet uh, that there were uh, just hundreds of attacks all over Syria uh, killing the Christians. That's where it really happened. But see, our government's openly funding the Islamists to do this. Kenyan police seek youths over Christmas Day church burnings, Reuters, on and on and on. I think I'll stop right there. And folks know that I'm not, quote, an Islamophobe. In fact, the neocons, they were busy getting rid of our Bill of Rights and Constitution uh, in the eight years before um, Obama got in. And, of course, the Democrats are more than happy to use all that power now and all that unconstitutional garbage to say the Tea Party are the new enemy. You notice that happened. You notice the whole Homeland Security apparatus is pointed at anybody who's not a total criminal, anybody who actually loves freedom, anybody who actually cares about having a future, who doesn't have a criminal instinct. I don't care whether you're a classical liberal, a libertarian, or conservative. These people are literally demonizing us and coming after us. This is a political purge. Total creepville. And my issue is, is they always say, Alex, you say there's no radical Islam. And, you know, you say that Bush with TNT blew up the World Trade Center. I never said that. I said criminal elements in our government have been funding radical Islam since they took the keys away from the British Empire and Hitler had it during World War II when he took over the Middle East and North Africa. And they have used those groups to menace the world and to take over countries. And then now they use them to attack us so they can then take our rights. And it doesn't mean they totally run them. They just fund them, open the door for them, let them come in and attack in a false flag. Just like Richard Nixon, it's been declassified, was going to bomb his own RNC and blame it on his political enemies. It's called a frame-up. The oldest thing in the book, 
in criminology, it is, it, is, it, it is ancient, framing someone. Look at who has the motive to get all this power, all this control, set up a police state in the name of fighting Al-Qaeda. Meanwhile, they are turning them loose in North Africa, Central Africa, Western Africa, Eastern Africa. Al-Qaeda, they bring Al-Qaeda in. To, it came out in the Ivory Coast this year in mainstream news. We, we covered the reports here at the time that the governments in multiple countries in Africa said, listen, we're pro-West, we're, we're Christian. You are giving Al-Qaeda control of these oil refineries, and then they pull out when the special forces or the mercenaries show up, and you just use it to steal our national refineries in the name of protecting them. You are running Al-Qaeda. And then the you know, prime minister gets shot the next day after he says that. I mean, that folks, let me explain. This is, this is 101. You want to take over, take everybody's freedom, get trillions of no-bid contracts? You go fund hundreds of thousands of crazy jihadis. You give them high-tech weapons in Benghazi. You let them go on complete rampages worldwide. The public doesn't know the difference between a Shiite and a Sunni, a Wahhabist. So you tell them, the public, give your rights up or Al-Qaeda will kill you. This is 101 strategy. And the general public has no idea how things even work. And it's very frustrating to me to sit here and to watch radical Islam, the very tip of the spear of radical Islam, funded by the criminals that have hijacked our government. And that's another reason Obama and all these people need to be impeached because before they were a little more sneaky back in Jimmy Carter's day funding and creating Al-Qaeda and the Taliban in 1979. Brzezinski's written three books bragging about it since then. That's how dumb they think you are. They admit to these crimes. His national security advisor is Bigny Brzezinski. They were, they've been smarter since then, you know, to cover it up. Now they don't even care. They just openly, here, here's tow missiles. Here's heat-seeking missiles. Here's anti-tank missiles. Here's heavy artillery. Here, here Al-Qaeda, here's armored vehicles. Here's air support. Go take over, blow up churches, murder everybody. The Pentagon now admits, I was watching C-SPAN earlier in the week. We had it on in the back, and I was up here working. So I just kept walking in, like watching 30 minutes of this, 30 minutes of that. And I was watching this C-SPAN uh, event on Middle Eastern studies from Georgetown. And they had this top professor in there. And he was from Qatar. And they were just admitting all this. Well, the American plan did quite well to break up uh, Iraq and destabilize it. And now it's in total turmoil. And we appreciate that in Qatar and Saudi Arabia. And now our program is to destabilize everyone but us. And, and it's all these professors and media there and all these policy wonks. They all know how things work because they've been involved setting the policy. And I'm sitting there watching them admit this on national television. But I know that only policy wonks watch that. C-SPAN has a tiny audience usually unless it's got big debate feeds or whatever. They could have millions watching. But it might have had maybe 10,000 people watching it, and it's all professors and policy wonks. And what I'm telling you is, that's why I get so angry and frustrated. They're all admitting all this. You notice everything I talk about keeps coming true because it already had come true. I'm not predicting anything. This stuff's already going on. I tell you about it. Later, they have to admit it. You go, oh, you predicted that. I didn't predict this. They're hiding in plain view like an elephant in the room. The Republican leadership with foreign banks, with the Democratic leadership, wrote Obamacare as a foreign corporate tax. And now Boner and all of them are trying to destroy the Tea Party so they can bankrupt this country. It's very frustrating. All right, I've covered two stories now. It's 877-789-ALEX, 877-789-2539. That's a different number than weekdays. Weekdays, the network takes the calls, and we take them from Minnesota. I'm based here in Austin, Texas, and on the Sunday show, it's all produced right here in Austin, Texas, from South Austin. 877-789-ALEX, 877-789-2539, and it's wide open as long as your phone has good audio quality. I tell you, phones just get worse and worse, and studies show that, both cell phones and landlines. Uh, unless you're talking about Skype or other systems like that. So again, I think we're going to start taking more Skype calls. We should set it up where we can take FaceTime calls.
Do you ever think about that, guys? We can give out a FaceTime number and do what talk radio has it done and revolutionize stuff. Boom, I want that in the new studio where we have a FaceTime number. And then it can come in like three, four in queue or take one as it comes in, put it on air. You'll have to screen it, though, if it's a video call to make sure it's not a naked woman or something. <laughs> but it's Internet. And, you know, we can ha have a delay. Oh, my gosh. See, watch Glenn Beck will be doing this next week. <laughs> that's all they do is listen to my show. But that's fun. I love it. That's, that's my broadcast as well. It's good to be innovating things here. All I want to do is beat tyranny. The greatest uh, compliment is uh, imitation, ladies and gentlemen. See, I want to have more brainstorms. I want to innovate like I used to do. I've gotten bigger, so I'm, I'm always busy trying to keep all the other operations running, and I'm not innovating like I've been wanting to, but we're about to innovate. It's so frustrating, but we're so close to the redesigns on the new sites, Infowars.com, We are We are We are so close. Just almost ready with that, and we've got the new TV studio done, rolling out in the next few weeks, and we've got the reporters online and trained and up to speed doing a great job, and the crew, and, and the financial funding with our sponsors and the products we sell at InfoWarsStore.com. It is such a blessing. 2014 is going to be a key year for the InfoWar. Believe it. Okay, so coming up in the next segment, your phone calls. Now, let me continue with some of the other articles. Exclusive U.S. government urged to name CEO to run Obamacare. Reuters is reporting. Isn't that just special? And again, they're going to put it into a whole process. And oh, my gosh, the CEO will fix it. And Congress has got to agree to whatever the CEO wants, Obama's puppet. Uh, or we won't make it work. See, you, you create something that's a ripoff. You claim it's an accident written by the insurance companies to increase prices and protect them from uh, losses and make you buy their products and lower the quality of care and so many other things and give government control of all your data and make your data public where they can share it. I mean, that's what it is, a giant 10,000-page screw job. And they tell you, oh, we're going to polish this dropping. We're going to put perfume and lipstick on this giant 800 pound pig we're going to tell you it's betty page marilyn monroe we're going to tell you it's uh, kate upton you're like that looks like an obese pig to me with uh you know warts all over it. And they're like well that's because you're a conspiracy theorist i'm like it's wallowing in mud and oinking they're like no it's not it's 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 wearing a swimsuit <laughs> that's obamacare it's a giant fat pig with warts all over it in a bikini and I mean, it's just, and they're telling you it's Marilyn Monroe. So that's what's going on here. And I predicted this with my experts like Dr. Blaylock and others. Before it happened, we told you what they were going to do because they've done it in other countries. Here's another one. White House looks to spread good Obamacare news. And they basically go on to admit in this uh, report that there's no way they can do it from Politico, that there is no good news. But it's going to be a bunch of propaganda. You know, you're a winner. Don't let the Republicans win. You know, support Obamacare. When the Republican leadership had more to do with creating this 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 rape job than the Democrats did, the Republican blue blood leadership literally conceived of this abomination ten years ago as the ultimate wet dream screw job for foreign mega banks of direct taxes for corporations on the American people. And the Democrats, they love it because it'll bankrupt America. So they're all on the same team. They want to collectivize this. This is it. It's the ultra-rich funding centralization, folks, and authoritarian moves towards autocratic systems. MSNBC, Dyson says Phil Robertson and Duck Dynasty, part of majority white supremacist culture. And I told you that that was coming. You see... Free speech is racist. Guns are racist. The NRA is the Klan, even though they were founded to arm blacks to fight the Klan. Facts don't matter. Obamacare is a great deal. I'm racist if I don't agree with it. So I agree with it. Oh, don't call me racist. Oh, my goodness. Political correctness and being trendy. Oh, my gosh. I would get in a fetal position and, and, and urinate all over myself on the ground in a catatonic state begging uh, if someone called me racist. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. This is what they're doing now, see? Now, if someone's allowed to have free speech, it's racist. Now, if somebody can say, I like women, not men, that's racist. I happen to be surfing through the television today. I hardly ever watch TV, but they had a 
episode of the new Two and a Half Men on FX or something. And, and so I started watching it. Because then whenever I watch it, I realize that I am responsible for Charlie Sheen not being the, the main character on it. I mean, on record. <laughs> and I'm sitting there watching it. And then it uh, goes to commercial and comes back. And I watched most of the show. And the whole show was promoting people to be homosexual. And I'm like, talk about overselling and being beat over the head. What is the agenda here? Well, this is the only right you're going to have. You're going to have NSA spying on you. Foreign banks are going to take money out of your bank account and make you buy Obamacare. They're going to devalue the dollar. There's going to be no future in America. But by golly, we're going to have gay people getting married. It's just a huge distraction to make us all fight with each other. And I know I'm stating the obvious here, but it's just to see the brainwashing, to see the agenda. And then I flipped to some other news channel, and they were saying the same thing. And then I flipped to another channel, and it was just all they were doing was gay, 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 gay. And then I went to brunch at a restaurant, and they had the news on without the audio, and it was gay, 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 gay. And then I got in my car, I was listening to talk radio, and it was gay, 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 gay. And I was just like... And I walk in here and the stacks of articles they're printing off. Gay, 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 gay. And I'm just like, my God, is there anything else going on here? I mean, this is like sexual harassment, folks. I mean, if I tuned into the news channels and they were like, yeah, sex with women, sex with women, men and women having sex, men and women having sex just over and over again, I'd be like, why is that all they talk about? It, it's like being beat over the head. You get sick of it. I'm just sick of the social engineering. And then parents aren't parents and dads are bad. And that's the other message. The men are all attacked and heterosexuals were being made fun of on Two and a Half Men. That was the other part. So it's not just gay, 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 gay. It was men bad, masculine men bad, family bad. And I'm just like, what type of society are these screwballs trying to set up here? I mean, I'm living in the middle of a freaking twilight zone at this point. No wonder mainstream media is dying. No wonder people want to look at a bunch of rednecks praying around the table because people know this trendy culture has brought us depression and collapse and mindlessness and vapidness and shallowness. And so people are like, maybe hillbillies in camo with big beards are going to give me salvation. People are looking for leadership. They're looking for something else. When we come back, I've got the clip of MSNBC run by the White House saying... That there's a majority white supremacist culture. And that statement means the majority white population are white supremacists. Let me give you a news flash. Whites are basically 50% of the population. Most of them are old. There's not going to be any white people to point your finger at in another generation and say, there's the bad man. Say good night to the bad guy. To quote Tony Montana. Target cards, millions of those being hacked and identities being stolen. We have a special video report up on Infowars.com. Breaking that down right now. Uh, we also uh, have uh, tycoon Robert Wilson gives away 800 million fortune before jumping to his death in New York City. Uh, all of that and more is coming up today. But again, uh, you didn't know that Phil Robertson wasn't just wasn't just a homophobe for saying, "Man, he's sick of the whole gay mafia agenda." Constantly just parroting. And promoting an agenda even to children in schools. And of course, Robertson's now been restated onto the show because of the incredible backlash. Well, now MSNBC host has come out and said, well, this is part of the white supremacist majority. And of course, the only majority is white in this country. It's aging. It's providing the folks that are taking care of them with jobs. I, I've got to say, I'm not into white supremacist ideas. I love all cultures and groups. But, man, it, it's kind of weird to know that Europe has 1.3 replacement rates for every two adults. They have 1.3 kids. Uh, I'm not Japanese, but to know the Japanese went from a 1.3 to now a 1.0, and men won't marry women and women won't marry men, and it's a total collapse. I'm watching civilizations die, and... It is very, very upsetting to watch the industrialized world committing suicide and the establishment media helping grease the skids for it. But then I can't run to the third world because it's collapsing into tyranny. I'm telling you, this world is getting crazy.
because it's easier to be evil if you're a social engineer and part of the power structure and to rationalize that that's a good idea and that the public doesn't deserve to be uplifted and to make people dependent than it is to really try to play by the rules of humanity and build up society. And so that's why things are so bad. And they're going to get a lot worse before uh, they get better. But we're here exposing the real agenda. That's the good news. But uh, before I go to your calls, I thought I'd play this clip of the demonization. I told you it was coming that Phil Robertson was a racist with no proof. Because MSNBC's called me deeply racist and then show no proof. They just say deeply racist, like saying Barack Obama eats children's brains every morning and then moving along. Of course, there's no proof he does that. I imagine that's the kind of stuff goes on with all the flies that are, he had flies landing on him again at a press conference. I mean, it's like the devil or something. It's like Animaville horror. But the point is, is that it'd be like saying Hillary Clinton went to the moon and not having proof. So now they're again race baiting. They're screwing everybody, cheating everybody. We should all be unified around due process and liberty and free market and what made America great and what works and what we know doesn't work is socialism and collectivism. Instead, it's all no fight with each other over sexual preferences, over religion, over race. Fight with each other while the establishment robs you seven ways to Sunday. Divide and conquer. Balkanization. Oldest trick in the book. The Romans wrote volumes on it. I've read at least five books I can remember by Roman generals and Roman emperors about how they would divide and conquer people. And I'm telling you, stuff written 2,000, 50 years ago by Julius Caesar, The Battle for Gaul, a collection of letters to the Senate. Go read it. it used to be required reading in like the 10th grade. That's when I read it. And everybody's like, we have to read this all boring. It was every chapter was incredible. Every chapter was like five, six, seven battles, how they divided one group from the other, how to, how to manipulate groups where they were invading in other areas. This has worked real good with the Germans, and, then, and, and this works real good with the French, called the Gauls. And, 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 then I re, and, and then I read the slave manuals on how to control black slaves. It's exactly the same stuff. And later... It was in the news, I think it was Walter Williams, like 15 years ago, wrote about it. How they got these Caribbean manuals in French translated into English, admitting it came from Roman slave manuals that were mainly white slaves. And, and, and you're sitting here going, wow, they still use old Roman slave manuals of divide and conquer on us today. Because it works, because those people 2,000 years ago were just like us acted just the same, and so why do something new? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I sit here watching them social engineer people. I sit here watching them manipulate us, robbing us of our freedom, robbing us of our real equality, robbing us of our health, our future, playing God, turning the world over to the very worst people in society. And I just want people to become aware of the manipulation. Because you're smart, folks. You've learned how to be cool or how to like football or how to invest in the phony stock market, the facade. But if you learned how the world really worked and learned about how the establishment wants to keep you distracted with petty issues and, and celebrity and all this other garbage, they want to keep you distracted because they don't want you involved in the real game of life, the real things that are going on around us. But again, here is the hardcore red hot poker of race politics, race hustling, limousine, authoritarian liberals sticking a hot poker into our flesh and then pouring salt in the wound, saying, you know what, free speech is racist, and the majority in America, white people are all supremacist, and they need to go down. This is the type of warfare they engage in on MSNBC. Here it is. The, 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 the mythology is that all interested, interested parties should come to the table, but let's not pretend that African American people have had control of the law, where that they have indicated that Jim Crow was against poor white people. There is not an equality of means of representing your interests or means of asserting oppression. So when we have this mythology of all come to the table, let's it be, at least be honest about who has been provided opportunity to get their viewpoint broadcast more broadly. And Phil Robertson and the Duck dynasty is part of a majority white supremacist culture that either consciously or unconsciously incubates hatred toward those who are different. All right, well, I want to say this, folks. Uh, I would like to see people, 
people. I don't care what color you are. These are the folks always talking about color because they're the race managers. And I'm not saying the old civil rights movement was bad. No, I'm saying the new groups in control are total manipulators with an agenda of division. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. If I'm walking down the street and I see a painter, I don't look if they're Hispanic, black, white, or who they are. If it's a neat painting, I admire them and I want to talk to them. If I'm sitting in a bar ordering dinner and there's an old black guy sitting there and he's interesting and, and has a lot of great points, I admire him. I see electricity in his eyes, his humanity. I pick up on it. I feel drawn to him. I like him. I want to go fishing with him. If it's an old white man, a woman, a Hispanic, I don't care. I like humanity and cool people. But I don't like big gangs of people who say, oh, whites are all in a gang, bring them down. The truth is, humanity needs to get in a gang promoting liberty and freedom together and realize the globalists are the main gang trying to divide us so we can't come together around basic Bill of Rights, basic Constitution. That's the larger plan. And what's sick is, everything the establishment does in the name of equality is meant to create inequality. All right, listen, I'm going to go to break, come back. We'll take calls in the next hour. I didn't get to them this hour, but I will next hour. Andrew, Chris, Dennis, Phyllis, Brad, Philip, Dennis, Jason, Gabrielle, Sean, Dustin, Hunter, and more. I will take your calls as soon as we come back at the start of the next hour. And then I'll have to wait to the last segment of the show to get to all this other news on driverless cars and the big secret behind those, the latest MS. NBC um, attack on the Second Amendment, the latest attack on the Second Amendment via shutting down lead bullets. We're going to get into key info about federally funded highway DNA checkpoints sprouting up nationwide that are going from voluntary to mandatory as, you, as we warned you they would. All this and more coming up in the second hour of this worldwide transmission and Social workers worldwide are taking children from their parents that are overweight, but then also not letting the kids exercise at school, banning tag, banning athletics, claiming it's dangerous. So the nanny state bans kids playing outside, but then when your kid becomes overweight eating GMO, they take them from you. It's incredible attack on the family. Stay with us. Yeah, I think that would have to be the Snowden leaks and specifically the fact that all the people lost in the Matrix do not understand that NSA spying has nothing to do with national security and everything to do with tyranny. That's the sad part about it. I agree with you. I think the biggest story of 2013 is Obamacare, along with the Syria war, not materializing like they wanted it to, and the Snowden. I think those three things are the trifecta that all come together, and it's the year that dinosaur media began to fully collapse. I don't know. There's so many things. What do you think was, I mean, I mean, I guess you just told us, but what do you think of those other stories? Oh, uh, the Syria thing reminds me of weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. They had to lie to go to war, and uh, fortunately this time it backfired. I mean, uh, that that's pretty significant, isn't it? I totally agree with you, and I think of everything. Probably the Snowden thing was the straw that broke the camel's back because they'd always said, we don't spy on you like East Germany. Don't believe the conspiracy theorist. And then exactly what we'd warned them about turned out to be true because there had been other whistleblowers before and the whole thing blew up in their face. I think you might be right. We'll have to ask the other callers. Is Snowden the biggest story of 2013? What do you see in 2014? Well, I think the government and the New World Order are going to look like the Three Stooges, and I can uh, tell you where I get that idea. Andrew Bartsis, who happens to hold the rare ability of accessing Akashic Records, has pointed out that entities that are a jokester race have stopped picking on the common people and are now picking on the New World Order. And if we do our part to help, it's going to look really Three Stooges-like with leaks coming out and everything, and they're going to look really stupid. That's what my prediction for 2014 is going to be. All right. Well, I appreciate your call. Uh, who knows? <laughs> it's just there's so much crazy stuff in this world. I know this. I got a Breitbart article I saw on DrudgeReport.com. Woman hypnotizes priests, steals church donations. 
And that article ties into a mind control story where the Russians spent a billion dollars on mind control. They spent a lot more than that, folks. We're going to be breaking that down as well. Chris in Florida, thanks for holding her on the air. Well, Alex, I'd agree that uh, with the case of Cherry, it's the first time in history that educated U.S. troops have openly boycotted uh, threatened police action, preventing it from ever happening. That's right. They start the Civil War funding al-Qaeda three years ago. Uh, they act like, oh, we got to fix this problem, getting rid of a bad guy to put something in 50 times worse. And the military said no. The word got out, and it all came out. Our government runs al-Qaeda. Huge defeat for the globalist. Indeed. And with Fukushima, it's uh, been going on for three years now. So uh, thanks for offering solutions, including your entrepreneur activism, and bringing that, uh, that's probably the biggest issue on, on my, in my book. But um, also for revolutionizing the future is uh, what's being foretold by more folks who are learning about new green and clean energy sources to help get off the grid. And I'd like to uh, draw your attention to what's uh, coming up this January 10th through 12th in the Tampa, Florida here, that I would like to see if you'd be interested in uh, interviewing Joe Shea of HHOGames.com. That's uh, HHOGames.com. No, what is it? Uh, well, pardon? So is it a conference or something about that? Yes, that, that's the, uh, that's the uh, it's called the uh, Green Energy Exposition, and it's at the Museum of Science and Industry, 4801 East Fowler Avenue in Tampa. And uh, what he has are, uh, all, well, various types of technologies, and the admission is free, by the way, but there are vendors who will have uh, kits, for example, uh, because it is called HHO. And where is your booth? Where, where is your booth so folks can visit it? I don't have a booth. I'm just uh, trying to promote it because I believe... No, I hear you. It's incredibly right. exciting. They came in with all this fake green energy to just steal money and not get us on to all the new truly green energies. Again, the globalists are masters at creating a counterfeit for any new movement that'll challenge their hegemonic rule. Then they stifle innovation, stifling the species and their own children in the process. That's the old reap what you sow. Stay with us. More calls straight ahead. So much of life is about having the spirit of liberty the spirit of survival, the spirit of fight in you. Uh, I'm not the toughest guy around, but if you get in a fight with me, you're going to get a 110% right back. But back when uh, I was a big weightlifter and, and more of a jock in college, I had a lot of buddies that were UT football players, and we'd go out and have a few beers or be at some you know party, and they'd start arm wrestling. And I would arm wrestle uh, folks because they would, you know, hey, get over here. And I'm, I wasn't that big, 180 pounds. I could bench press about 350 pounds at, at, at my healthiest. And a lot of times I would end up beating guys that weighed 300 pounds that nobody could beat. They were like, how are you doing that? I never had any training in it. I would get mad. But at first it would only be one. At first they'd almost beat me. But then I just couldn't lay down and be beaten. And then I would surge and beat them. And I hadn't arm wrestled in years, and I was at a little company event, and I was arm wrestling the shipping department's champion arm wrestler. And uh, he was beating me at first. Even as an old man of 40 years old, I, I beat him once he almost beat me. But it was so incredible. I had no strength until he was about to beat me. Do you understand what I'm saying? I couldn't wake up. I couldn't get angry. I couldn't focus. Now I've got torn muscles in my bicep, but the point is I won. And that's the frustration of getting old. It won't matter sometime down the road how angry I get. The young guys are going to be able to beat me. 25-year-old guy is going to be able to beat me. The muscle-bound 25-year-old will be able to beat the old man. But I'm still not old yet. And that's really my great frustration is I don't have enough strength in the fight for liberty. I don't have enough gusto and zest for what my spirit wants. I want to work 24 hours a day fighting tyranny. I want to beat these people. I take it personal. I'm totally committed. Because I know they don't like humanity. The globalists are parasites. They're control freaks. They're sadists. And I am just a fan of humanity. I like seeing people empowered. I like seeing people successful. I like seeing people share liberty together in free association. And the globalists are the opposite of that. These are really bad people. And the fruits of the New World Order are political death. Let's go to your phone calls. Dennis and Phyllis and Brad and Philip and Jason and Gabrielle and Dustin Hunter. We're going to go to all of your calls. Dennis in Canada, you're on the air worldwide. 
Yes, hi, Alex. Thanks for having me on. You bet, brother. Good uh, to talk to you. The biggest story of 2013 was the uh, China launching an aircraft carrier. Do you see that as the beginning of a new Cold War? Absolutely. They say it is. They've got nuclear targeting in the U.S. Our government under Clinton gave them all the missile secrets, all the ICBM MIRV technology. They've launched a giant blue water Navy. They have more helicopters than the United States has. They're launching drone programs, and they've been given all the weapons to do it. It is a total sellout of America. The globalists have chosen China as the new global ruler, the new sole imperial UN peacekeeping enforcer. America and Russia are to be brought down. America and Russia are to be deindustrialized, sterilized, and brought down. America and Russia should be teamed up together to lead the world into the future, not, not sold out by a bunch of bankers. I mean, it's so sick. Uh, the other big story, obviously, I have to agree with Andrew, uh, the previous caller, was uh, about Edward Snowden. Yes. And uh, do you see all that culminating in the Olympics in Russia? Uh, because uh, apparently Snowden is in Russia. Well, you know, they just tried to bomb the Olympics over there. We even have some footage of it. Uh, the, the head of uh, Saudi intelligence, Prince Bandar, said t three months ago on television, if the Russians don't stop aiding Assad in Syria, they'll start bombing Russia with al-Qaeda they control. And a big bomb went off today, killing at least 15. Uh, more than 50 have been injured. More will probably die, unfortunately. Uh, dramatic footage of uh, the uh, facility being bombed there. Uh, but, but listen... I agree Snowden is ultra-massive. What do you make of the Syria war imploding and everybody learning that our government's running al-Qaeda? What do you make of Benghazi gate? What do you make of Obamacare blowing up in Obama's face and people not buying it? I, I mean, do you really think Snowden's the biggest story? Because I think you may be right. It's just 2013 has been so momentous, I, I can't decide. I see, uh, well, if I could speak about the Syrian war, I see it as uh, if you look on a, a strategic map of uh, Syria and you follow the pipeline that heads northeast, it goes right up into Kurdistan. And they say that there's enough oil in Kurdistan. I don't know how long it would last or what the reserves are, but basically the oil uh, bubbles out of the ground there. And it seems like as if they're just trying to take over Syria send that pipeline straight up into uh, Kurdistan, get all the oil out, send it to um, Aleppo or uh, whatever the capital is on the um, Mediterranean. And that's that's how I see it. I see it as a strategic move. And uh, Oh, yeah, no. Israel, the people running the United States, uh, the EU, the French are really behind it because they've gotten promised about 40% of that pipeline's money. Uh, that's their stake in it. They're, they all admit it's about a pipeline. They'll kill a million Christians... They'll destroy the whole country. They'll turn it over to Al-Qaeda. They'll sexually mutilate all the women. They'll put burqas on their heads, kick them out of college. And you'll never hear a word from the liberal cause celeb media because Obama's a Peace Prize winner. And you're absolutely right. God bless you. I appreciate your call. Again, if you just joined us, I'm asking the callers, what were the biggest stories? Not the biggest in the media, the controlled media, but what do you think the biggest stories of 2013 were? And what do you think the big stories of 2014 will be? What do you think the big developments are in this key year of 2014 that we're only two or three days out from? Phyllis in Texas, thanks for calling. Go ahead. Yeah, hi. Hi. First off, I'm 64. I took Latin in high school. I read the Roman emperors, you know, crap. And the, when I read the ACA in 2010, I recognized so much of it is all globalism. That's it. You read Roman emperor documents where they're communicating with the elite how to screw the people you watch the news you're like my gosh they are following roman emperor science because roman emperor science was the best control system against all those other corrupt countries and empires the world ever found and they haven't developed better systems of evil than the romans go ahead well i came across your program today so uh, forgive me i thought the biggest story was benghazi and i really want that investigated and impeachments and all that but not, i'm learning so much just listening to the today's show so so what do you think the biggest story is i mean is it is it nsa is it snowden uh is it the mainstream media collapsing this year uh is it uh, benghazi gate is it obamacare falling on its face i think the callers are probably right it's it's not even the fact that Al-Qaeda works for our government and our government staging these attacks all over the world, illegitimate elements of it, I think it probably is the Snowden revelations because that's what woke the sheeple up. Yep, and the globalism, yep.
What do you think is coming in 2014? More globalism. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm so uh, praying so hard that we can change Congress, but there's so much in the ACA that cannot be. The tentacles can't be ripped out of it. It's, there's so much of it that's already written in. Exactly, but we've got to point out whose tentacles are behind it. And the globalists are the main authors of our discontent, of our discontent, of the problems. God bless you. Appreciate your call. This is our last Sunday show of 2013, but I'll be back next Sunday in 2014 with a live transmission, 4 to 6 p.m. Central. But we have the weekday show, so never fear, fellow Info Warriors. I'll be here gibbering and jabbering like a broken clock. Stay with us. That the NSA can spy on us because they were spying on Al-Qaeda, the same Al-Qaeda that criminal elements of our government are publicly funding worldwide. And, and this is an example. Two weeks ago, a federal judge ruled that it was a violation of the Fourth Amendment and that a lawsuit could go forward. So in a separate case, they had him speed it up and say, oh, no, we're only doing this to protect you. This is the same lie of eight years ago that it was supposedly for Al Qaeda. And then it turned out it was for domestic groups and they're using it for economic data and spying on the Associated Press and spying on talk radio hosts and spying on Christian preachers. The establishment wants to know what people are doing. There's a reason this has always been illegal. There's a reason we have due process. There's a reason we have checks and balances. Because if you get rid of them, all hell will break loose and you're opening the gates to total tyranny. That's the big threat, what we now see happening. And notice, as the due process leaves, as the liberty leaves, the prosperity leaves. This has happened over and over again in history. It's happening right down here and all over the West. And I just wanted to point out that this is a deception. They went and found one little area of the giant NSA, CIA, private corporate spy grid. They went and found one teeny little, little edge of it, little tiny part. And made the whole debate about, well, in this case, it's about Al-Qaeda. So the whole thing's okay. See how they do that? It's amazing how they play these games. Here's another one on the London Independent. IT firms lose billions after NSA scandal exposed by whistleblower Edward Snowden. And it goes on to break down how these companies are making hundreds of billions, hundreds of billions every few years off gathering the data, which they then sell on top of it. By the way, I've got an article here today about the whole Target loyalty cards and how the data is now being sold and the Target credit cards. And I have a special report up on InfoWars.com that I shot at Target last night. Video, Target, credit card, mass identity theft. That's up on InfoWars.com. And we've got another report coming out tomorrow detailing this. The Washington Post reported back in 2006, Target is the number one data mining company that has retail operations in the country. And they have actually consulted with the FBI and NSA on how best to track their customers and their largest business of any product they sell is selling your data. And, and I'd forgotten about that. David Knight texted me, one of our reporters tonight, and said, have you seen this report out of the Washington Post? In fact, guys, will you hand me my little uh, NSA tracker robot uh, that they call an iPhone? I want to actually find that article. I want to show folks that. David texted me that and I said, oh, I'd forgot about that. Yeah, do a report on that tomorrow for the nightly news. But, but this is the type of issue we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen, that, that here I am actually pulling it up, that this type of stuff goes on. You don't really believe Target just lost those millions of credit cards, do you? No, they're going to use that to discredit regular credit cards and force you onto RFID, which is even easier to rob and scan and then after that it's going to go to pure face scan thumbprint to buy and sell then they're going to outlaw all other transactions and have internet ids and control free speech watch my full report on infowars.com i want to go back to your calls uh, in the interest of time but here it is knight sent me this you guys can give me a document cam for tv viewers on my iphone and i'll show folks the washington post article there it is Retailer, Target branches out into police work. Oh, you didn't know they take all your purchases and run them through police databases. And then you read the article, it's like, actually, they've always been involved in that. They taught the NSA everything they know.
They're run by a shadowy Pentagon group out of Minnesota. Oh, it, but they're trendy and liberal, so it makes it okay. There's the Washington Post. Go see my report at InfoWars.com. Okay. Um, man, there's so much to hit and so many calls. This is a short segment, longer segment coming up. Let me just briefly remind you of something here. This broadcast is listener supported. And so I have tried to find the very best products I can. You've got the incredible high mountain volcanic soil, totally organic in southern Mexico, in Chiapas. It's even better than Guatemalan coffee right over the border. And I've been drinking this stuff for 10 years, finally found a connection beyond fair trade right to the Chiapas farmers. I bought a large shipment of it, but it's going to sell out soon. We're working on getting more. Wake Up America Patriot Blend, Oregon Tilt Level, highest level organic, full of trace minerals, just off the charts, incredible. My favorite coffee. And people tried it and now have been ecstatic. At first, the coffee wasn't selling very well. Now it's exploding because people actually got the coffee and the word of mouth has just gone insane. So I will sell out of this shipment very soon. Quite frankly, the next batch may be listed as Guatemalan, which is close, but not as good until I get more of this incredible Chiapas coffee. We've also got the immune support with the special organic uh, mushrooms infused. It's all up at InfoWarsStore.com. The books, the T-shirts, the water filters discounted to cut out the fluoride, the glyphosates, the very best brands of water filters. Promo code WATER, 10% off. InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsLife.com to find the incredible nascent iodine that's done wonders for myself and my family. Mental clarity, thyroid, uh, stamina, you name it. Our own proprietary. Nobody else has got this particular survival shield. We have the fluoride shield that's in a two ounce, not a one ounce. That's the big uh, loss leader there because it's got the nascent iodine in it as well, but it's two ounce, not one ounce. And it's got five other compounds that supercharge the detoxing. So that's all available at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll free 888 253 3139. And lastly, I'm going to extend this special into the new year, we do this every Christmas, where you can get five months free when you sign up for a year at InfoWarsNews.com or PrisonPlanet.tv to see the nightly news subscription, to see all my films in HD, to see special live events, and so much more. 11 years of this site up and running, 18 years of material, PrisonPlanet.tv. I'm going to extend that special a little bit into the new year. You can get five plus months free when you sign up for a year or get a monthly trial membership for $5.95. And 11 people can use the membership with the same username and passcode. Nobody's got a subscription site where 11 people can use it for $5.95 a month. Our goal is just to pay for the bandwidth, have our own system that can't be censored as easily. So we can get the word out. So again, PrisonPlanet.tv. I want to thank all the members. We couldn't have built this truly independent, liberty-based operation without you. And we are using our media system to help other independent media organizations, to help other activists, and to give a voice to the people. And the people have spoken. They're listening. InfoWars is just exploding. Thank you. Thank the good Lord above. We are all in this together. Now, when we come back, no more news for a while until I've talked to... Philip, Dennis, Jason, Eric, Dustin, Hunter, Jeff, and others. And as we hang up on each caller, you've got a chance to call in. The toll-free number is 877-789-ALEX. Open the phones up again for about a minute. 877-789-ALEX. 877-789-2539. I will give each caller one minute. On the other side, as we can get to everybody, stay with us. France has a 75% tax on the poor, 100% tax on the rich, but the ultra-rich are exempt and get the rest of the money through government corporate welfare. We're going to break that down from the BBC coming up as well. And new law allows driverless cars on Michigan roads. I will give you the rest of the story on that. But right now, let's go ahead and go to your phone calls. Philip in Florida, thanks for calling. You're on the year worldwide. Hello, Alex. Hey, brother. Hey. Hey. Um, I think that uh, the story of uh, this year was gonna, is, would be the uh, Snowden release of uh, information and um there's a lot of things that i've been seeing on the media and people saying certain things on the right wing and the left wing propaganda outlets that for 2014 i think 
I think we're going to continue to see a continued co-optation of the Tea Party with uh, flailing of Obamacare and a floundering stock market. And the, I think By the way, I do be. have uh, the predictions of Mark Faber and others that have been very accurate. Look at the stock market going towards 20,000. Uh, you've got 100 to 1 price earnings ratios that make, that's like triple what was happening in 1929. I mean, there's no doubt we are cruising for a collapse that has been engineered. And, and I agree with you that I think we're going to see major corrections in the stock market in 2014. And uh, I think that it may either lead to a, uh, a bail-in, and none of these things are going to be very popular. And I'm afraid that there may be a some sort of false flag at some point that may end up dominating the news for the year. I agree. I think they're going to start a new war. They're going to stage terror attacks. They're going to create economic turmoil and then pose as the saviors and hold people hostage and say, nationalize the pensions and we can save the stock market. And the yuppies will go, okay, I'll put the handcuffs on and get in your yellow Volkswagen, Ted Bundy. Yeah, I think whatever happens with the, with the stock market is going to depend on those pensions, too. If they can't sell the carbon futures... That might also come into play. By the way, they've been saying that in the in Bloomberg and other publications. Carbon futures are what's going to save the economy. If you don't do that, the market's going to go down exactly. Exactly. And they hold you hostage with that big fake bubble that is the stock market. As the real economy crumbles, as depression takes place, they put all the extra inflation, all the Weimar Republic, Zimbabwean garbage wheelbarrows of money to buy a loaf of bread into the stock market and when it finally goes down they've got homeland security not just here but worldwide huge paramilitary forces to keep the public under control so they're going to use the collapse as the smoke screen for the takeover god yep. bless you great points yeah that caller best caller of the day we've had some great callers today by the way let's talk to uh, dennis in oregon you're on the air hi alex hey buddy hi but I think the most significant thing that we heard on your show last year was about a month ago when you told us that a return to biblical law is our only hope. You called it Levitical law. Uh, in the Old Testament, whenever a king like Solomon would forsake God's law, God would raise up an adversary to chastise him and correct him. And then things would, you know, if he repented, things would go well. And I think the same thing's going on here. Um, America has, United States has rejected God's law. And as a result, God has raised up this conspiracy or allowed it to, to, to prosper. No, I agree with you. And I'm not one of these fake Bible thumpers designed to make people run from, from God, run from basic, you know, due process, basic common sense. But I'm a wicked person. And, and by wicked, I mean, not like hurting poor people or doing really wicked stuff. But I mean, I'm a fleshly person and I'm attracted to bad stuff at some levels, but more and more I see it and I know, I realize it's bondage and I, I am repelled by evil more and more. And so, you know, being repelled from it is stronger than being drawn to it. You know, wanting to get in a fight with somebody, wanting to carouse, wanting to whatever, you know, those thoughts that everybody has going on in their mind. And then I look at evil people, they think it's good to be more evil. They think being evil is powerful. They're, they want to become more evil. They want to turn themselves over to it. And that's the thing. You don't just give in to some evil. You give in to it, the bottom drops out. And, and, I, and, and I have never been touched in my gut, my spirit, whatever you want to call it, like I've been this year. I feel impending doom is coming. Super bugs, wars, you name it. Economic collapse. Government's running around like a chicken with its head cut off. Buying billions of bullets, thousands of armored tanks a month, training to lock down cities, take guns, you name it. I mean, what do you think they're getting ready for? Well, where, where I would tend to take issue with, with you uh, is the, the assumption that common law can be traced back to biblical law. It's kind of like the parlor game of gossip. You have to go back to the original source to find out what was whispered in the first person's ear. And common law tends to morph over time. Um, I mean, I, I was simply speaking that the reason a thousand years ago, say in England, which is the great basis of Magna Carta 1215 and our Constitution, uh, 1798, um, Declaration of Independence, 1776, July 4th, is that they adopted Levitical law that was the basic of Roman Catholic law 
when it was brought into England and the rest of Europe because it was all it was so similar common sense is what I was saying. So our law is a mixture of Levitical and Anglo-Saxon law. American law traces it back to that. And so but but I agree the 500 plus laws of Levitical law uh, makes a lot of sense and I'm saying we're violating that. Right and you, you know by the, by the 1700s there were there were almost 200 crimes punishable by death in England. The Bible only requires 15. And so I, I think No, I agree. That became a tyranny. And, and, I, and I hear you. I appreciate your call. It's very complex legal issues you're discussing that I've tried to study for years and I'm a novice at. <laughs> That's what's frustrating about knowledge is that I'm like way up here on a mountain knowledge-wise. My callers are as well. But like a new listener or someone that watches mainline television, they hear this show and have no idea what we're even talking about. It's like might as well be you know, Martian gibberish or something. Now let's jam in one more before we go to break here. Let's uh, talk to Dustin in Oklahoma. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. How's it going? Hope you guys uh, at InfoWars had a Merry Christmas and everything. Thank you, sir. We did. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so what do I think the big story in 2013 is? Oh, man, where do I begin? Uh, <laughs> you have the DHS bullet by, you know, the uh, revelation of the NSA shenanigans like uh, PRISM and uh, KeyScore. I mean, it just keeps going down the list, and it's just it's, it's insane. But um, to answer your question, you know, I think that we're we are the biggest story of 2013. You know, the awakening, the uh, the restoration. Of the I agree. Uh, you just said it and crystallized it, and I was thinking that today. You just said it. It's all the stories together: the the, the war in Syria not being expanded, the the NSA, Benghazi, uh, Obamacare imploding. It's all part of the awakening and the loss of confidence and the 6% approval rating for Congress. Go ahead. Yeah, it's just the, the mass rise of uh, neo-patriotism in this nation, um, I think, is really what the 2013 was all about. Just people coming together under like mind, uh, just meeting and discussing the things that are important, uh, just to identify true humanity for what it is. Um, you know, that's really going to make the, the waves of the next decade and onward, in my opinion. Very well said. Please continue. Yeah, um, so just moving forward to uh, 2014, gosh, what do you expect? Um, I, I really see things getting done, in my opinion. I think that, um, you know, as the, I guess, the stranglehold of socialism continues to drain the wealth of our country, we, you know, as Americans, will respond to that and just, you know, adhere to all of the things that made America great in the first place, the documentation, the founders, um, what was put together. Exactly. You don't know what you've lost until it's gone. You're going to see all the basic common law, ancient common sense will become the hottest thing in the future. And 2014 is the beginning. It's the key juncture to decide if we take our destiny of liberty and freedom in our hands. It's going to be a hell of a war, but 2014 is a crossroads. Man, these callers are the best ever today. I'm on fire, and I love all of you. Let me tell you, some of you are a new listener. The only chance we've got is admitting this is going on, studying it, and then seeing historically how others have been able to stop it. And the biggest issue is not complying. In 2014, the awakening is going to accelerate. I'll continue to break this down on the three-hour weekday show tomorrow. We'll continue this same topic of what was the biggest stories in 2013. Not the biggest establishment fake stories, the biggest to you. And then what do you see happening in 2014? But I tell you, the humat or the human intelligence I'm getting from callers is helping me understand next year. And I'm really connecting with what you're saying. And it's just such a blessing. It is such a blessing to be here. Let me mention a few stories and go back to your calls. Florida neighborhood bans kids from playing in the street. That's United Press International reporting that. Now, we're talking about neighborhoods where there is nothing but street in between the residential. And then now they say people are following orders. No children are seen outside. They'll play television and get big, fat, and obese. When I was a kid, my parents didn't let me stay in the house. Cartoons were for Saturday morning. The kids next door that played proto video games like Atari, they were wimps. We played football, baseball, and fist fights all day outside. Climb trees, you know, stole watermelons from the local farmer, you name it. But the whole deal is nowadays, and I'm only a few times, you know what I mean. I lived in the edge of the city, but we could walk like five miles and five, find farms and 
you know, some farmer would see us in their field, run us off. Kids now are unhealthy because they watch television all day and they play video games all day. But that's not the issue. No, just ban being on the street in Florida because it's dangerous to be on the sidewalk. You might get hit. Here's another one. Social workers take children from families who overfeed them. And now with the mass body index, Jakari Jackson went to one of these Walmart, one of our reporters, one of these Walmart doctor robot kiosks. There's video of it on prisonplanet.tv. And it's like, you are overweight, 25 pounds. I mean, Jakari looks like a fitness model. He's not even bulky. He's just super muscular. And he's overweight. And you will be fined under Obamacare. And like $5,000 extra a year because he's not a totally skinny person. So that's the type of news and information we've got. Let's continue here. Calorie info coming to vending machines. You know why under federal law and Obamacare that does that? They don't care if there's aspartame or GMO or corn syrup. No, it's just the total calories, and they're going to tax you in the future. They've already said this, just like New York. Per bag, what it is in social engineering, you'll be penalized. Kind of like my buddy took his daughter to the hospital uh, today over th this uh, bacteria that's raging across the country. And they're calling it flu, but I've got family that's died from it, family Barely, you know, fighting for their lives over it. No, it's it's a, it's a drug resistant staff. We've now confirmed it. We have the name, the whole deal. But they go buy flu shots. That'll protect you. They don't even test you when you go in. And you're sick. It's like, oh, we're just gonna give you flu shots, which can push you over the edge and kill you when you already have a bacterial infection. Uh, but it was nothing but illegal aliens in there getting free health care. And then in the parking lot, there's multiple rows at the hospital. My buddy sent it to me. I'm gonna do a story tomorrow on it in Austin for electric cars. Of course, there are no electric cars, but it's all part of this social engineering where they're going to penalize you if you don't do what the system wants. So here it is. Calorie info coming to vending machines. World health experts want to have sugar consumption. We actually ate more sugar 60 years ago. I've looked at the studies. It's the GMO that's making us obese. It does it to rats and things. And I'm not saying sugar's good. With everything else your body's bombarded with, it does hurt your immune system. Processed sugar is bad, but they don't say processed sugar. They say fruit, you name it, sugar, period. See how they do this? And it's all about government controlling what you eat. All right, there's those reports. Um, oh, look, AP, NSA grabs your computers on the way to be delivered to you and puts technology on them to spy on you without warrants. Non-terror related, totally illegal. Exposed, the Soviet Union spent $1 billion on mind control programs. The news of Australia. Oh, really? What do you think our nightly news is? It's mind control. That is just some of what we're dealing with. Here's some more. France's 75% tax rate gains approval by top court. That's on the poor people. 75% tax. Mortgage rise will plunge a million homeowners into perilous debt. London Guardian. That's the plan. Mark Faber predictions 2014. The market will decline from current levels. Best Shorts, Facebook, Tesla, Twitter, Netflix, and Viva Systems. Best Longs, Gold, Gold Shares, Vietnamese Stocks. I agree with that. I don't even, I'm not even in the stock market, but I watch it every day. I know more than the average so-called stock watcher. <laughs> I'm not in that Weimar Republic thing, and I'm not in Bitcoin either. I don't get into dangerous bubbles, folks. You can be mad at me, but I'm staying away from the stock market. Sure, I could be part of it. I could have made tens of millions, literally, watching it, knowing how these scams really work. But I will not be part of something that obviously immoral. And I'm not on some high horse. All of my advisors told me 15 years ago, invest in prison stocks. This country's going pure prison. Prison stocks are up 300% in the last decade on average. I didn't invest in them. I told you 10 years ago. I said, if you're immoral, invest in prison stocks. I'm not doing it. All right, let me hit this final stuff, then I'll go to your phone calls. Look at this. New law allows driverless cars on Michigan roads. I, I, last time I checked, it's like 20 states have passed laws allowing driverless cars and 18-wheelers. Folks, they're not just going to supplant humans driving cars. They're, the insurance company said... 12 years ago when I was reading some of their public uh, meetings put out in, in, a, in a meeting in Chicago, I'll never forget reading, it was hundreds of pages of it. it they said that they're going to first phase in computer cars and trucks. Then they're going to show that they're, quote, safer, 
and then make it be computer assisted at first where the computer takes over as Toyota now does if you're not and Lexus if you're not driving properly and then soon sorry you don't get to drive and then that brings in total control. I mean, we are being turned into like those fat walrus creatures in the movie Wally -E, laying out on some computer controlled system. But the truth is, they're not going to let us get to that level of a bunch of self propelled stomachs. They're going to use computers to take over the real economy, use our energy and money to build the grid so the military can't say no to evil wars. It'll be a bunch of self autonomous drones and robots that, by the way, are already self-autonomous. That's been out for four years. They just declassified it last week, as I told you they would. And this is their total plan. They've decided that there's a total revolution in society. We don't exist in it. The decision's been made. And if you don't want to be extincted, because that's the final plan, as the elite merge with the machines, that's their public plan, Google all of them, then you better wake up and be part of this. And not just say, oh, that's that crazy Texan. Yeah, I'm a crazy Texan that reads what they say they're going to do 15 years ago, 10 years ago. Here's another one. I, and I already knew this from DARPA documents that came out of MIT about four years ago. They, When you're online and these millions of people playing these video games, these weapon simulators, these combat games where millions are online at one time battling, you're fighting computers that are AI tracking off real military hardware that you're simulating using it's the actual real hardware control and they are training combat robots in simulators the chips against the best humans boom new york times now i've told you this a hundred times here it is new york times brain like computers learning from experience in the combat realm i mean this is not a game ladies and gentlemen this is not a joke this is serious. The elite have always hated big populations, and labor's never been cheaper. Now we're not just cheap, we're a negative. Do you understand that? I said I'd take calls, I'm out of time. Jason in Georgia, let's move quick. What are your predictions for 2014? What was the big story of 2013? Well, I don't know, but I tell you, if, if they keep on doing what they're doing, the new world order is going to win. Uh, Alex, I appreciate all the news that you give us, uh, like me and a lot of other people, we cannot even stand the mainstream news anymore. Your analysis of the news is what drives us, and we appreciate you doing that. God bless you, brother. If uh, the New World Order is like the boy who cried wolf, every time somebody makes a prediction, the bad wolf sees what is going to happen. And what he decides to do with the little boy is he'll show himself, and then when the villagers come... He'll hide again. I agree. And then incrementally, people say, where's the New World Order? Where's the depression? We're in a depression, but the wolf says we're not in one, so people buy into that. Great point. I'm sorry to everybody else, Jeff and Eric and Hunter. Call me back tomorrow the weekday show, 11 a.m. Central. We'll be talking. We're going to be live the next few days with the weekday show and the nightly news, 7 o'clock. Great job to the crew. I'll see you next Sunday in the new year.